If you've written any Next.js code, congratulations, you are a backend developer. One of the things I find fascinating about Next.js is just internally how it works. Now I have a big, you know, I'm a big fan of the framework. I love the framework, partly because it's what kind of gave me my break in into the industry, but also because I really enjoy building full stack applications in one central code base. It feels like the cheat code to mono repos. But anyway, when you look at the next 15 request flow, you start to understand that this is a backend framework and I am writing server code. So congratulations, something to add to your resume. But really in today's video, I just want to talk about the next 15 request flow and how it works. So it starts, I'll just leave this here. It starts with a request being received. And that basically means someone going to your website, right? Let's say someone went to rossmike.xyz, right? That's my portfolio. So, and one thing I find interesting is that the uh, server, I used to think it was an express server, but it's actually some custom Node.js server, which is very interesting and I would love to know how it works. And then we get into routing. Now the routing, the router is initialized and in Next.js they use a file system router and this loads basically the router tree and in build time it basically compiles all this. It lays out basically how um, the routing is going to be. You can think of routing as simply as when I go to rasmic.xyz, the route I'm going through is the slash route. And then let's say there's uh, an about page, right? And let's say there is, um, you know, a con contact us page, right? These are basically, um, these routes are mapped through the file based routing. And how this works, if you're watching this, you probably know, is let's say I'm in the app router. Let me just delete this real quick. Let's say I'm in the app router. And in the app router, I have a page.tsx. This is going to be my slash route, my home route. But an about us page would be an about folder. And then in the about folder, I'd have a page.tsx, right? So this mapping, this is how the paths are mapped on Next.js, right? So the slash about page would be this page.tsx file. The slash page would be this page.tsx. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Um, and when you essentially go to that page, the URL is parsed and matching happens, right? How the matching happens, how it works deep down the code, I have no idea, but I just know it works, right? Um, and there's two types of routes or pages, right? Well, let's stick to routes. There's static routes and there's dynamic routes. A static route is something like um, slash about, right? Let's say I have an about page, I'm not fetching any data. This is a static route. And if I just have a static route, static page, it's just JSX, just HTML, all that the, the server is going to return, it's just going to return HTML to the client, right? And then the client, you know, shows that HTML, right? So if I go to an about page and there's no, um, you know, there's no data fetching, there's no dynamic data, there's no, nothing dynamic, it's just HTML. Those type of pages load really, really fast. And this is why if you have a blog, your blog probably renders really, really fast. But if you have um, a dynamic route, you have dynamic parameters, basically something like slash product slash ID, right? Where this ID is dynamic, right? Like you're maybe fetching this ID uh, from a table in your database and then you're, you know, rendering all that stuff, right? So the way the route matching resolves this is it first tries to find an exact match, right? So let's say I'm on slash product slash one, two, three, four. It's going to try to find this exact path, right? If it doesn't, uh, Next.js has this thing where you can set it up called catch all routes. But if you don't have a catch all route, it basically fails, right? So the specific exact route takes precedent and then it checks for a catch all route. And if you don't have it, the page breaks, right? Because there's nothing for it to show. So once the uh, route is matched, we then get to the middleware stuff, right? And this basically middleware is awesome in the sense where you can manipulate the incoming requests, you can, you know, mess with the headers, rewrite the URLs, do redirects, right? If you like are building like a multi-tenant application and you want people to see a different URL, like all the redirect stuff, the rewriting stuff would happen here. And 
the middleware is very powerful. The Next.js middleware is very, very powerful. Um, I highly suggest going through the docs and learning about all the stuff that you can do because I, I think it was in the last six months I learned like all the cool things that I could do. So the middleware is responsible for that. You can have multiple middlewares. Um, and essentially what you want to do is you just want to be able to modify, you know, headers, rewrite URLs. Um, you can also do like auth checks. Um, I know, I think clerk does their auth check in the middleware, basically check if you're authorized and you're supposed to be on that page. If not redirect the user to request this past this stage, we get to the server side rendering. Right? So yeah, here is where the component tree starts to build. And essentially what that means is from the root layout, it starts to recursively go down and render all the stuff that it needs to render. So this is where this happened. This is where the server side rendering happens. Now you see optimization checks and it says Next.js optimizations. You know, when you're writing Next.js code, if you use the image tag, um, they do some image optimization. Again, I don't know how it works, but I know using the image tag saves you money and makes your pages uh, a lot faster. Um, and so if you have that type of stuff or fonts or whatever, it does that optimization. If not, we go to the next step, which is data fetching. And the data fetching part is actually, actually interesting because I have an example here. When people saw a code like this, where a database call was made in a component, people were freaking out. And the reason why they were freaking out is they did not understand that this runs on the server, right? So the data is fetched, the data is then returned, the component is rendered, and when the component is rendered, the user, the client only gets the HTML with the data, right? They don't get access to this. What they get access to is the complete HTML with the data. People thinking this call was happening on the client freaked out because, you know, doing any database call on the client, you're probably going to expose some keys and that's how you get wrecked. And a lot of people saw this code and freaked out. And this is why I say Next.js is a backend framework because all this is running on the server. Now in this stage, what happens is there's a couple things that happens. First of all, the HTML is generated, right? So the data has been fetched, uh, the JSX is done, data has been populated. That is now turned into HTML. The JSX to HTML transformation happens here. Component segregation also happens here, right? We separate server components from client components, but mainly the main important thing that I want you to know is that the JSX to HTML transformation happens here. Next step is that the HTML is passed to the client and then client side hydration happens. And now on my browser, I can see my beautiful web pages built on Next.js, my favorite backend framework. Now, believe me when I say there is a lot that happens here and I have oversimplified all the things that happen, but I just wanted to give you a high level overview. And if you enjoy videos like this, I would actually love to dive deeper, not only for myself to learn, but also to share with you guys. So let me know if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe, hit the notification bell. It's your favorite Next.js developer, backend developer, Ross Mike. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.